So we are going to talk about carbapenems. The antibiotics that can come under carbapenems are imipenem, meropenem, eratapenem, and doripenem. Right? When we talk about the the carbapenem structure, you can see the like in beta uh, penicillins, you see the five member dihydrothiazine ring, dihydrothiazine ring. But here the difference in carbapenem is in the in the position one there was sulfur in penicillins, but here it is carbon here position one, and there is a double bond here. That is the only difference in this five member ring, right? In carbapenem. Then also they are beta lactam, so they have the four member beta lactam ring. They have a four member beta lactam ring because they are beta lactams. Carbapenems are beta lactams. Then also they have a side chain attached to it. This side chain this has hydroxy. Actually, hydroxy ethyl. So there is a carbon and hydrogen here. There is a CH3 here. So this hydroxy ethyl side chain, this is in the trans configuration. This side chain is in the trans configuration. T R A N S, not cis configuration. Trans configuration. Because of this trans configuration, these carbapenems are resistant to most of the beta lactamases. Not all. Most of the beta lactamases they are resistant. Why? Because of this trans configuration of hydroxy ethyl side chain, hydroxy ethyl side chain, right? So that is why it is it has resistant to lot of um, beta lactamases. So that is about this structure. So that's what we talk, we already talk about this. Huh? They differ from penicillin by replacement of sulfur. By carbon in position one and having a double bond between C two and C three of the thiazolidine ring, right? That's what we talk. Then the trans configuration of one alpha hydroxy ethyl side chain at C six confers excellent beta lactamase stability, which is res responsible for their broad spectrum activity, right? Then also about imipenem. Imipenem is degraded by the Mammalian renal brush border enzyme dehydropeptidase one. When you take the brush border renal renal tubules, easily proximal and distal conotal tubules, there are brush border enzymes. Right, the brush border means microvilli. Like even in the intestines, you know the upper part of the intestine, do the in the ileum, there are brush border enzymes. Brush border enzyme means in the microvilli, there are. Enzymes similarly in the renal brush border because there are lot of things being reabsorbed in the renal tubules, right? So that is why they have brush border. So this brush border have brush border enzymes, right? One of the one of the enzyme is dehydropeptidase one, dehydropeptidase one present in the brush borders of the renal tubules. So this enzyme inactivates imipenem. Imipenem is an antibiotic that can be inactivated. Not other carbapenems. Only imipenem become inactivated by this enzyme. So when it give the imipenem to a patient, it passes through the renal tubules, right? During the during the you know it goes to the bloodstream and goes to the renal tubules. So it will be inactivated by dehydropeptidase one. So imipenem is always given with the substance that antagonizes dehydropeptidase one. So the, you have to give imipenem with the dehydropeptidase one antagonist. That's what we call as Silastin, silastin is dehydropeptidase antagonist. So imipenem is always given with si combined with silastin. But remember, all the other carbapenems are resistant to dehydropeptidase one. So we don't have to worry about giving with another giving with silastin. It's only with imipenem. Okay. So imipenem is degraded in vitro by mammalian renal brush border enzymes dehydropeptidase one. Therefore, it has to be co-administered with silastin, a dehydropeptidase dehydropeptidase one antagonist. Others, other carbapenems are stable to the action of dehydropeptidase one, and they don't need simultaneous silastin. So I think it makes sense, right? Right. Then, when we talk about the mechanism of action, you already know they are beta lactams, so they bind to the transpeptidase or penicillin binding protein. They inactivate transpeptidase, so there is that means it prevents the crosslinking between peptidoglycan chains, right? Transpeptidase crosslink peptidoglycan chains, right? So that without that crosslinking, peptidoglycan cell wall becomes weak, and the Osmosis of entry of water, entry of water by osmosis occurs, and cell undergo lysis, right? Without strong uh, peptidoglycan layer, so they are by binding. Uh, so the mechanism is by binding and inactivating penicillin binding proteins, which are, which is transpeptidase, right? 
and also remember the they, they penetrate very well into body compartments and they they penetrate very well into body tissues that's why they are very effective antibiotics right they are penetrating into body compartments and tissues is very good so when you talk about the resistance of uh, uh, carbapenems right so they produce beta lactamases right no not they produce the organism that produce beta lactamases but remember carbapenem they can inactivate most of the beta lactamases they can inactivate they are they are resistant to most of the you not know, most of the beta lactamases but there are some broad spectrum beta lactamases called carbapenemases produced by klebsiella pneumoniae kpc klebsiella pneumoniae carbapenemases right this is a klebsiella pneumoniae carbapenemases right right so they are very very strong carbapen uh, very strong beta lactamases so Uh, they will be they will inactivate carbapenems so carbapenems are susceptible they are not resistant because th those carb beta lactamases are very strong klebsiella pneumoniae carbapenems are very strong and they will inactivate uh, carbapenems right they are mainly produced by klebsiella pneumoniae and also azinotrobacter baumanni right so that is one mechanism but uh, right beta lactamases but remember they are resistant to most of the beta lactamases but they are susceptible to carbapenemases produced by klebsiella pneumoniae and acinetobacter baumanni right then no so uh, you know that 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 is one mechanism of one mechanism of res resistance is beta lactamases the other mechanism is bacteria some bacteria express less porins porins means channels in the outer membrane right Remember, gram-negative bacteria have outer membrane, right? Lipopolysaccharide outer membrane (LPS), right? So they have porins, the channels that have protein molecules that allow the uh, molecules to enter, right? So the uh, some some of the bacteria become resistant by producing less porins. Less so less porins means less channels for the entry of molecules, right? Less channels, so they the drugs drugs cannot enter. So there is another mechanism: impaired permeability of outer membrane due to impaired expression of porins. That is one way. Then efflux of drug. Efflux of drug means drug enters the bacterial cell. They will be transported out again. Efflux. They ch chase them out. Right? Efflux of the drug. Right? They even the drug enters. They will be expelled out. Right? Then also some bacteria produce altered penicillin binding protein. No altered transpeptides. Okay. Then this is the most important area. What are the antimicrobial effect? They have very good gram-positive activity. Remember that one. They have very good gram-positive activity, including streptococci and staphylococci. But remember, staphylococci only methicillin-sensitive staphylococcus. Remember, strep staphylococci. If it if they are staphylococcus aureus, if it, if they are methicillin-resistant staphylococcus, if they are MRSA, right? They are not. Carbapenems cannot. Destroy them. Carbapenems are ineffective, ineffective against MRSA. Right? They are effective only against methicillin-sensitive Staphylococcus. Right? Remember, oh, none of the beta lactams are effective except fifth-generation Cephalosporins. Right? That's what we, uh, we talk when we talk about Cephalosporins. Right? So remember that. So they have good gram-positive activity. Then also Enterococcus faecalis is susceptible to imipenem, but they are resistant to other carbapenems, right? So Enterococcus, if you want Enterococcus faecalis uh, infection, if you want to treat a carbapenem, use imipenem, not other uh, other um, carbapenems. Then also Neisseria gonorrhoeae and Neisseria meningitidis are highly susceptible to carbapenems. So that is why when there is a septraction resistant Neisseria gonorrhoeae, right? Now if you remember Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Right, gonococcal infection. Right, the most popular drug is ceftriaxone. We give single dose, right? In an adult, to an adult, we give 250 milligram intramuscular single dose, right? But, so, but there are some not very common, but there are incidents of uh, ceftriaxone resistant Neisseria gonorrhoeae. In that type of cases, best drug is carbapenems, right? Carbapenems, right? Step by step, they use ceftriaxone. Right, so they have good gram positive coverage, good gram negative coverage, including Neisseria. Neisseria is gram negative. Okay, uh, but remember, gram negative they have good gram negative coverage, but they don't. They are ineffective against carbapenemase producing Klebsiella pneumoniae. Right, right. So if you uh, out of all the carbapenems, Doripenem is the most active against Pseudomonas originosa. 
So remember carbapenem have anti-CD1 activity, but doripenem is the best one. And also remember ertapenem has no anti-CD1 activity. So ertapenem doesn't ertapenem does not work for CD1 aspirinosa. So remember that one, okay? I think it's on the other slide. So doripenem is the most active carbapenem against CD1 aspirinosa, right? Even the, those producing AMC beta lactamases, right? So doripenem is very effective. For pseudomonas. Ertapenem has no activity against pseudomonas originosa. Ertapenem has no activity, remember that term. Right? And also, carbapenem have very good anaerobic cover. They have very good anaerobic cover. Gram positive anaerobes, gram positive cocci, such as peptococci, peptistreptococci, bacteriofragilis, that are gram negative anaerobes, and also gram positive anaerobes, such as clostridium. They are effective, but clostridium deficient, they don't work for clostridium deficient. That produce pseudo membranous quality. Other than that, cl cl other clostridia, clostridium botulinum, clostridium data, they have work. They are effective. Right? They are also effective against nocardia and actinomyces. Right? So the summary: good gram positive cover, good, good gram positive cover, except uh, except uh, uh, methicillin resistance is tough for you. Good gram negative cover, except. Uh, Carbapenem is producing Klebsiella pneumoniae, right? And good, good Pseudomonas originosa cover, except Ertapenem that doesn't work for Pseudomonas originosa. The best, best uh, Carbapenem that works for Pseudomonas originosa is Doripenem. Okay. Then about uh, adverse effect. This is, you know, they are, old, they are beta lactam, so there is hypersensitivity, and any antibiotic can cause antibiotic associated diarrhea that is produced by Clostridium difficile, right? Clostridium difficile overgrowth producing uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea known as pseudomembranous colitis. So they, they can occur with any antibiotic. So hypersensitivity is another one. Then also, this is the important thing to remember. All carbapenems are safe in the safe, but imipenem means neurotoxic. Imipenem has some kind of neurotoxicity. So if you want to use uh, a neurological infection, don't use imipenem, right? In meningitis or patient who comes with uh, uh, spinal or uh, 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 cranial uh, lesion, right? After a motor uh, accident or something, don't use imipenem. Imipenem means neurotoxic. It can produce seizures. Even, you know, with high doses, dose of imipenem can produce, it is neurotoxic, can produce seizures. You don't give it to patient with neurological complications, right? So, any patient with neurological symptoms, avoid imipenem, okay? I think uh, that's it uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the lecture and I'll see you with my next lecture. If you found this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can get new video notifications by clicking the bell icon. My Patreon supporters can request lectures and get exclusive content. Please check the description for links and more details. Thank you.